Hello friends, let's continue with the second part of the simulation of direct or control and in this video we are going to discuss the crucial part of uh, direct or control that is DTC control. So let's continue with the today's session. So now uh, to have a quick review of uh, how the direct or control works, this block diagram helps us. The block diagram uh, can be explained in this session. So this is the speed reference. Uh, actual speed is compared with the speed reference and error is given to a PI speed controller. Right? So it's a PI uh, controller, which is popularly known as speed controller. And it is followed by a limiter block. So ultimately based on the error, required torque command is generated. This required torque is the torque at which motor should accelerate or decelerate to reduce the error quickly to the zero value right then this required torque which is generated or torque command is compared with the actual torque and the torque error is given to three level hysteresis then torque control now this can have three values plus one minus one and zero plus one when you want to increase the torque minus one when you want to reduce the torque and zero when you do not want to change the value of torque so this is first loop Second loop is for flux. You can see this is the uh, flux reference. In induction motor, we would like to keep this flux constant. So this flux reference is given over here. Actual flux is compared with it, and error is given to two level flux controller. The output of it is plus one or minus one. Plus one when you want to increase the value of stator flux, and minus one when you want to reduce the value of stator flux. One more information is required. That is the Position that is angle of stator flux. So in zero to three sixty degree uh, plane, where is exactly stator flux, which is a rotating vector, right? So based on all these three information, a switching uh, lookup table selects an appropriate voltage sector that is firing pulses to BSI, and BSI produces certain voltage at certain frequency, which is uh, suitable for the induction motor as per the required speed. Right? So this uh, block diagram is implemented in uh, the simulink and in subsequent slides we are going to explain it and then we are going to see the demo of the same in our MATLAB uh, model. So inside DTC we are having this uh, six main components, flux estimator which estimates magnitude and angle of stator flux, then torque estimator which estimates the value of torque. Speed, speed controller, which is a PI controller, three level hysteresis band torque controller, two level hysteresis band flux controller, and lookup table, which is the ultimate uh, target to get the required uh, firing pulses. So now let's see in simulink how these six items are realized. So this is the uh, DTC controller block, which is ultimately taking input as a speed reference, uh, actual speed measured, actual torque measured, Q and D component of stator flux, then uh, Q and D component of stator current. These are the input values and output are nothing but the pulses which are given to the voltage source in So these are the six items. You can see this is flux estimator, number one, number two torque estimator, Number three, PI controller, that is speed controller. Number four, it's a torque controller, three level hysteresis band. And number five is a flux controller, two level hysteresis band flux controller. And number six is where the actual lookup table is implemented. Let's see quickly each block in detail. So, flux estimator, so it calculates stator flux magnitude and angle from DNQ axis component of stator flux. And uh, here we have to assume, see there is a whole theory that uh, when you have switching uh, position, switching phase vector and you have DC link voltage and then you have uh, uh, the values of stator current, the other thing you can explain. Of course, stator resistance is required. So DTC is the scheme which requires only one parameter stator resistance and that's why it is so much uh, uh, preferred, right? So this is the block flux estimator. 
inside you have a block which is uh, basically this is tetraflux uh, QD component they are decoupled and you have a uh, the uh, Q component and decoup component and then uh, this is uh, real to real imaginary component is converted so it is nothing but the carrying out actually it is carrying out the uh, square root of x square uh, plus y square uh, operation so this is why from q and d component of stator flux you, you get the uh, stator flux phi, phi n right so this is how the uh, psi s is estimated right so this is psi s is square psi q s square plus psi d s this is the first estimation that is stator flux estimation and uh, this is the angle estimation so once you have psi s you can always find out magnitude and angle so this angle is in important from which we are going to find the sector of the stator flux so in which sector it is lying that also we are going to find out in dtc we we divide the zero to six degree plane into six sectors and based on at which location the stator flux is we select the appropriate voltage switching voltage vector right so this torque estimator is the second agency it calculates torque developed by the motor this is the torque estimator now what is required to calculate torque so this is the expression for torque torque is 1.5 into p so here number of poles are 2 into psi ds iqs minus iqs ids right so all this information is provided and the same mathematical equation is implemented over here uh, in this right so this is how we can estimate the torque. Third is speed controller. So speed controller is nothing but a PI controller. Now why PI controller is required for electrical drives? So we'll have a separate video for it. But electrical drives are uh, having mechanical equipment which are taking some time to respond. So here PI controller is going to give more, uh, you can say, uh, better performance. And here. The ultimate aim is to have a good dynamic response and uh, steady state accuracy should be high. So this PI controller is realized over here and the saturation block ultimately is nothing but the, uh, it is setting up the required torque in case of large positive or negative error. What should be the maximum uh, torque at which motor should accelerate or decelerate, right? So that is uh, implemented over here. The so KPKI and required torque or torque commands are generated by a PI control. This saturation block is must generally students forget a saturation block after a PI controller and that gives an abstract very strange reason. So this is a three level hysteresis band torque controller. So from torque error and actual torque, we find out H, uh, uh, what should be the value of HPE plus one if you want to increase torque, minus one if you want to reduce the torque, and zero if you want to have no change in the torque, right? So here the torque error is compared with the command torque, and if it is within the say 10% variation, we, we select the band. Here the band is 0.1, that is 10%. So if it is within the band, no change. If it is positive and beyond, then ultimately I have to reduce the uh, torque. If it is negative and beyond, I have to increase it. So depending on that, HP plus one, minus one, or zero are generated with this logic, simple, greater than, less than, uh, and uh, simple mathematical logical operations are there to generate this HPE plus one or minus one or zero. So I've used only common sense logic to realize this. Next is the two level hysteresis when flux converter. So we we'll just gonna we'll just compare flux reference with the actual flux. And if it is a, if the difference is more than a particular band, then it is to be set plus one, otherwise minus one. Right? So these are the two status signals for hysteresis band flux converter. Now this is the lookup table which was discussed in my previous video, which I posted long time ago. So this is the where you can see at side, at PE and sector. These three informations are required. So if it is uh, the flux error is plus one, torque error is torque status signal is plus one, and in the actual status 
flux is in uh, sector one, then V2 should be selected, which is going to give improvement. That means which is going to get to the required uh, speed. So this is how every at every sample this is compared. This signals are generated, and uh, depending on uh, which sector is uh, the tetra flux is in which sector. Uh, from V0 to V7, any of these fitting space structure is selected, which is nothing but the uh, firing pulses to the uh, inward. So, this is how the lookup table is implemented in MATLAB. So, here the S, HTE, and the, uh, the SK, that is sector information, they are compared in if and if else loop, and ultimately the pulses are generated. Right. So, this is how the DTC controller works. Now, let's see once again the simulation. So, once again, you can see the DTC controller block. So, this is this is DTC controller in which I have a speed controller. In speed controller, I have a KP and KI. This KP is 100 and KI is selected 50. This values you can tune. I have tuned using trial and error method only. Uh, tuning of uh, the DTC simulation block will be discussed in the third phase. This is torque status generator where, uh, as discussed, the plus one or minus one will be generated, and uh, this is the angle extraction. This is flux estimation. This is torque estimation. The mathematics we already have, and it's implemented using the simulated basic block diagram. And this is sector selection. So just simple if else condition that angle is compared with the two limits, and you find out whether uh, which sector is high. Right? And as for that, we can find out the value of SK, which is sector information. It can have any value from 1 to 6. Right? So, this is the, uh, once again, this is the reference speed. And uh, once you have a reference speed, all, if it is set, it is going to run at the required speed. Let's run the uh, simulation. It's compiling. What you are supposed to understand that you can see state of current QD component, speed, speed reference, state of flux QD component, and torque. These are the variables which you are supposed to pass to the DTC controller. Then they are going to uh, produce the gate pulses and the voltage switching voltage space vector will be generated using the voltage source inverter uh, with the help of the PC control, right? So this uh, psi S and T, they are estimated and they are given to this uh, scope. So you are able to see also, you can see Simulation is running, and you can see you can see the motor has reached eighty radians per second, which is our command speed or reference speed, and it is running at the speed developing required torque. Now, the same simulation can be carried out with a different, different uh, uh, set speed. You can change the load, you can play with the different parameters and study the direct torque control method in detail, right? So, in this video, I am going to stop over here. We are going to discuss all this, uh, whatever is remaining in the simulation of direct torque control in our subsequent video.
In this video, we had discussed how DTC controller takes uh, various parameters and how it produces various functions. Right? Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.